This video is brought to you by Paw, the most advanced API tool for Mac. Hi, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to build this book info application. And what it does is that you can get information about a book by scanning um, its barcode at the back of, of each book. Um, and once you scanned it, you will immediately get the information that we're looking for here. So information about uh, the title, subtitle, author, publishing date, number of pages, language, and its ISBN, which is its unique identifier. Uh, it works really fast and we're going to build that with Swift UI. Um, and this video is really all about um, working with an API um, using it in Swift UI. And also, um, it's a little bit of a training to uh, an approach of um, identifying key information and playing around a little bit with the necessary uh, parameters and search strings. Um, and we're going to have a look at the Google Books API for that purpose. It's a very simple API. It's neat to know authentication um, for, for the purposes that we're going to use it for. And it's also free. Um, and it's TLS encrypted, so um, it's, it's, it's really rather easy to use. And um, to explore this API a little further, we're going to use PAW, which is a great tool um, for working with APIs. And I've already created a, um, a project here, which is called Book Info, so I'm just going to open that up. Um, and, and you're going to see the advantages of using a dedicated tool um, in a second. So uh, first of all, let me just quickly copy this uh, URL here from the Google Books documentation. You'll find this um, under the uh, guide section and then using the API. And now using PAW, I can create a new request, um, which I'm going to call search term. Um, and I'm using, of course, a get request to get information right here. Uh, let me just quickly copy that again paste it right there. And as you can see, what's really cool is that the Paul automatically identifies our URL parameter, which is called Q, and we can add a search term here. So I'm going to look for Harry Potter, and I'm going to uh, run the search right now. And as you can see, Paul automatically escapes the white spaces here, replacing our white space um, between Harry and Potter. And I could also add here, um, and the Chamber of Secrets, for example. And then if we run this again, then you can see uh, that this happens with every white space, which is really a big help. Um, and in addition to, of course, looking at the documentation, having the uh, response from, from the server or from the API in this clear way really helps to just have a look at how the data really is structured and uh, what data we can get with the, with the request that we just make. Um, and as you can see, uh, the interesting thing is that we get all the information we want in the volume info, we have a title, we have a publisher, we have a published data description. Um, and what's interesting for us is also these industry identifiers um, that we can work with. Um, and we're later going to use the ISBN to search for um, a certain book using the barcode. And we can simulate that right here in Paul already, creating just a new request real quickly, pressing Command Shift N. I'm going to call this request ISBN. And um, if we just um, maybe copy the um, URL from Google again and paste that right here, um, then we can replace our search term with ISBN colon. As you can see here, there are some special keywords that we can use in the API. For example, ISBN. Um, and now I could enter a ISBN here. But what if I wanted this to be based on a previous um, request that I made? Let's say I just want to um, process every time I actually change or uh, change my value here, looking for another book. I like also to change um, my ISBN right here. So just as an example, what I can do is um, right click, for example, on my identifier here, which is my ISBN, and I can copy this as response body dynamic item. And um, now I can just actually paste that right here. 
And if we uh, double click on this, uh, then we can still change the key path if we'd like. Uh, we can have a look at what we actually want to use. We want to use the response from our search term request. And here we also have this item or this um, value. And now if when I make this request, um, then we get only one item, which is uh, for the Chamber of Secrets. Um, and the cool thing is now that I can change my search term here in our search term uh, request, for example, to the philosopher stone, send my request, also update our request here. Um, and using the ISBN for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, uh, we get now only our result that we're looking for, which is really cool and which simplifies working with um, chained uh, responses a lot. And um, when we uh, have a look at the items or the information that we get here, this really fits our needs perfectly. Um, when we look for an ISBN um, using um, the base URL here, our Q parameter, ISBN colon followed by the ISBN, um, then we get all the information we need for our application. And now that we got the lay of the land uh, regarding the information that we can access using our API, we can start coding our book info application. I have created a little starter project um, so that we can really focus on the API stuff right here. So I've uh, laid out the user interface, a really simple thing. Using a form, we have um, our button in the upper right corner um, and all the code that is related to the barcode scanning is in the barcode scanner struct. Uh, we have a book search manager that we have to implement and we also have a book.swift file for um, the data model. And this is what we're going to start with. Paul can create a data model for us. We're going to use another great feature later to access the data and make our request. Uh, but for now, we have to rely on our ability to uh, go through our JSON response right here and identify uh, what kind of elements we need to use and how to structure that. So if we work from the inside out, then in this case, we do not get a subtitle, uh, which means that we should definitely make that optional. And um, we're going to start with that and build our first struct. So first of all, we're going to call this, and this is now quite important. As you can see, this is all part of volume info. So you can see that all of the information that we just talked about is inside this volume info object, which means we're going to call this volume info and adopt the decodable protocol. We don't need to make this encodable um, because we just want to decode the information. Um, if you want to have something that is decodable and encodable, you could also use codable. Um, but we're just going to go with um, decodable here and we're going to need a title. And here it's really important to exactly match the keys that we have in the API. So if it's called title, then use title. If it's called publisher, use publisher. Um, if you wouldn't do that, you would have to use coding keys. Um, it's possible, but for us, let's keep it simple right now. So we're matching um, the key names from the response. So we're also going to work maybe with the subtitle, uh, making this optional because not every book has that. Also going to work with authors. And as you can see, um, if we have a look at the response here, um, that if we have a look at the authors, uh, this is an array. So um, an array of strings. So we should also make this an array of strings right here. We're going to have a published published date as a string and we're going to have our page count and here we should have a look at that again and see if this is a string or if this is an integer um, because we also need to match the type here so where is the page count page count page count here is the page count so this seems to be a number, so we can go with an integer right here. 
And then the last thing is going to be language, which is going to be a string. So moving from the inside out, we have our volume info right here. Now, where is our volume info located? If we have a look at that and collapse the volume info, then this is part of a list of items which we could call book items and each item has an ID and it has a volume info, it also has a sale info, access info and so on, but we're actually just interested in the volume info. And I would also go with the ID, could be useful, uh, we don't know if we are using that or not, but since it's there, um, let's maybe use it for, f uh, for future purposes. So in this case, we can go with our own title, which is book item. Again, it's decodable. And we have an ID, which is a string. And we also have our volume info, which is now, of course, of type volume info. So in this case, we're using our own name uh, because this is just an item inside the items array. So if we now move further up in our response, then we're going to create yet another struct, which I'm going to call books, which is also going to be decodable. And inside that, we're going to have a list of items. Um, so again, looking at the response here, we have this array items right here. So we also need to call it that way, items. And this is now, in our case, an array of book items. And with that, we have our data model and everything we need to decode the data from our JSON response ready. And as you might know, there are many different ways to actually make a URL request and get the data from this URL. Um, and here comes another very handy feature of PAW, which is in the um, lower pane here that I can bring up, um, which is code generation for uh, different purposes. And as you can see, um, I've just selected the uh, Swift version of um, uh, our request using an NSURL session, which is uh, the most standard way you can actually make such a request. You can use third-party libraries like Alamo Fire or, for example, Mockingjay uh, or whatever you like um, to keep it as standard as possible, which I like. Uh, I'm going to use NSURL session. I'm just going to copy that code from Paul right here. And we're going to make some modifications here and just paste that to our book search manager. Um, and what we're going to do, just a few changes to adapt this to our needs. For example, I actually don't want to call this class my request controller. I want to call that book search manager. Um, I also don't want this to be called um, send request. I want this to be called get book info. And I also do have some parameters that we need to take into account, which is, for example, the ISBN, uh, which we're getting from our barcode that we're scanning. Um, and I also would like a way to actually get the information we get from our API out of this function, returning a books object. So I'm going to create a completion handler here, uh, which is going to be escaping. And uh, we're going to pass along a books object, and this is going to be void function. Um, so this is our definition right here. Let's go through it real quickly. We have our base URL, uh, which is Google APIs books v1 volumes. We have our parameter, uh, which is our um, ISBN. So here we can just use string interpolation, remove uh, the um, hard-coded value here and replace it with our ISBN that we get as a parameter now in this function. Um, and for the rest, can just keep it that way. Um, and as soon as we start our task, we of course need to make some changes because we just don't want to print a URL with a HTTP status code telling us that everything worked fine. Um, so what we're going to do instead 
is first of all, get our JSON data using a, a guard let statement, creating a JSON data object. Uh, we're checking if we can get this from the data um, that we have in this completion handler from the data task of the URL session. And if this does not work, we'll return because then uh, we don't have any JSON data to work with. And since there is now a process that could go wrong decoding the JSON data, we need to use a do try catch block. So uh, we're going to create a book data object. And to get this, we're now using a JSON decoder, initialize that, and decode something. So we're decoding um, with a specific type, which is our books type. So using book self from our JSON data object. And if this worked and um, we're trying this um, statement, so we can now uh, know that in book data, we have the information that we're looking for. So here, um, we just call our completion handler and pass along the book data that we just created. If this should not work, then um, we catch our error and just for our tutorial purposes, we print the error. In this case of decoding something from JSON, don't use the localized description. Um, you'll get better information when you're just using the error object. Besides from that, we're not going to make any changes to this automatically generated code. And as you can see, this sped up the process quite a bit. Of course, um, working with Paw uh, is great, but of course you can do everything you saw here uh, with free tools like Rested or just using your browser actually, but it's a lot more comfortable um, using dedicated software um, for tasks like this. And now we can already put all the pieces together. Um, if we have a look at the barcode scanner, there's a lot of code here that is just related to barcode scanning, uh, but the um, dedicated function for a case when we found a book um, is actually the only place uh, where we need to make some modifications uh, because if we found a book and then we pass along the ISBN, um, based on the barcode back to our um, content view, uh, which displays all of the information. So as you can see here, um, if I'm going to make this a little bigger here, uh, we're just using a binding here um, for the ISBN and displaying the ISBN in our form. And we're going to do something very similar now um, for our books of our, our one book that we found, um, but I'm going to uh, create a new uh, state here, just private variable um, found books, which is going to be of type books, making this um, optional, correcting my typo here. Um, so here we have our state, meaning that we're going to go into our barcode scanner Right to the top here, we already have a binding for ISBN. We're going to create a new, another binding for um, our found books, also optional type books. And um, if we now go down again to our found function, then we can now use our book search manager and initialize uh, an object of that class and now get our book info. We do have an ISBN here as a parameter of this function, so we can just pass along the code um, and then create our completion handler right here. So we're going to call this books. And as soon as we have these books, we actually need to um, go into the main thread using this patch um, Q main performing it asynchronously. Um, and now we have to access, since I'm using um, a UI view controller representable here because the AV capture session isn't compatible with uh, Swift UI or with pure Swift UI yet. Um, so I'm using the parent here, um, the parent of this coordinator. If you're interested to know um, how to work with um, um, UI view controller representables, then just watch my dedicated video on that. So using the parent, I can actually access my view controller um, and then use its found books, which is our binding um, to our content view, and then just assign our books that we've found 
to this property. Which now means that if we found our books in Content View, we have access to these books. And we could do this now a lot cleaner, um, but to save some time, um, let's just go into the title text right here and use string interpolation to access the found books. In its found books, we do have items. We're selecting the first item that we're getting. And uh, in this item, we do have a volume info and the volume info contains our title. And by that we're accessing this. Uh, we could, as I said, do this a lot cleaner. We could uh, wrap this in some helper functions to just get the title a bit a bit quicker, but this way you see where the data is actually coming from. Um, since this could be optional and we couldn't get any title, uh, what we should also do is um, supply a default value, which is in this case title. Um, I'm going to pause the video now and do the same thing for the rest of our text fields. And now with the text fields completed, just really doing the same thing over and over again, um, we are ready um, to actually update the barcode scanner uh, initialization right here because we knew no longer only pass the binding to the ISBN, but also to the found books. Uh, since we want to be able to make changes here, we need to pass along um, the we need to use the dollar sign um, and we're actually ready to run this now. I'm going to run this on my phone um, and just do a quick test of this um, app and see if it works. So I'm pressing the scan barcode and oops. So we're getting an error message here. Um, we have um, an ISBN, that's cool. Um, we have URL session tasks succeeded with the 200 status code. Um, but as you can see, key not found. Um, and here we made a mistake. Um, we made exactly what I said we shouldn't do, which is not exactly matching the key, um, which is of course language. And we have a typo here. So let's go back to um, our book.swift file and change this to language. Then also go back to content view, also change that here. Um, run this real quickly again. So let me just mirror my phone um, to the Mac and let's use our barcode scanner. Let's scan this and this works really great. Let's try another book, scanning again, and we get yet another book right here. Um, so this is how to approach uh, creating an application that uses an API to, to populate some um, user interface elements. You've seen how this works in Swift UI really easily by creating a simple um, URL request that also um, decodes the data based on our data model that we interpret from what we get from our uh, server response. Um, you've also seen how actually how simple it is to work with uh, a binding here to uh, pass along the information between the result of the request and the interface. If you're new to bindings, then check out my video on property wrappers in Swift UI. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel to not miss any future tutorials. I thank Paul for sponsoring this video. I thank you for watching it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.